I've heard from foreigners many weird things about Russia. For instance, many Europeans still think we wear Valenki and drive to Lega, that we have bears in the streets and that in winter, when it turns minus 40 degrees, Red Square is covered with no drifts. When talking about Russia, foreigners first think of Russian vodka, taiga and snowstorms. We'd like everyone to understand that Lenin, communism and perestroika are not the most inspiring pages in Russian history and that Russia has a lot more to it. Chekhov, Dostoevsky, Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff, Stravinsky, Solzhenitsyn, Chagall, Brodsky, Korolev, and Popov. All of them were Russia as well. Russia, it is the Hermitage, Peterhof, the Kremlin, Lake Baikal, and huge potential for economic development. Russia and Europe are neighbors. We're not separated by seas and oceans. We've got only borders which are conventional and created by human beings. So how come Europeans know so little about Russia? Russia occupies a ninth of the total surface of the Earth. The territory of the Russian Federation covers more than 17 million square kilometers. It is 560 times bigger than Belgium. Our country has nearly 160,000 settlements, which are home to 132 million people. Russian airlines alone transport 40 million passengers a year. Imagine, that's the population of the whole of Spain. The country has natural resources in abundance. For instance, Russia has a third of all natural gas resources and 10% of all resources on Earth. According to 2007 data, Russia had the 10th biggest economy in the world and was in the top 10 in terms of gross domestic product size. Russian economic growth is going to exceed all ex international experts' expectations, according to the regular report of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Over the past four years, Russian fixed capital investment has increased four times. The volume of foreign investment has increased sixfold. The annual volumes of exported and imported goods have tripled. Golden monetary reserves. In 2007, Russia was third behind China and Japan. Along with large-scale companies, small-scale businesses is growing fast too. Compared to the previous two years, when 50,000 new small businesses were registered each year, in 2007, over 120,000 new small businesses were set up. Salary levels in the country are increasing by an average of 25 to 30 percent per year. Consumption volume is growing along with income level. According to a PricewaterhouseCoopers assessment, retail sales in Russia will increase by around 22 percent by 2010 compared to 3% in Europe. According to the same source, by the end of 2008, the total area of shopping centers in Russia will be twice the 2006 figure, exceeding 7 million square meters. The Russian automotive market is also a European leader. Analysts forecast that if the current rate of growth is maintained, vehicle sales in Russia will top 3.6 million cars by the end of 2008. Moreover, imported vehicle sales have already increased by more than 60% compared to the last year. Demand in the real estate market considerably exceeds supply. One square meter of residential real estate in the center of Moscow costs at least $11,000 or $5,000 to the southwest of the city center, 40 minutes from the Kremlin by underground. The average price of one square meter of secondary residential real estate in Russia was around $1,750 in December 2007. The booming growth of luxury market in Russia reflects the increase in citizens' personal income. The market is expanding at an annual average of 15 to 20 percent. According to certain assessments, turnover is currently at the $9.2 billion mark. Rich customers are willing to pay two to three times the asking price for luxury goods. For example, if in Europe a brand name watch costs around $4,000, in Russia it already costs $16,500. 
Moreover, many Russians have already stopped going to shop abroad. All goods are available in Russia, even though they are twice as expensive. The fact that, according to certain statistics, one in every 15 houses sold in London in recent years was bought by a Russian also attest to how rich certain Russian citizens are and to how many rich people there are in our country. Nearly 19 million people live in Moscow, one of the most dynamically growing and expensive capitals in the world and in the Moscow region. St. Petersburg and the Leningrad region has a population of over 10 million, but Moscow and St. Petersburg are by no means the whole of Russia. Over 100 million Russians live outside the two metropolises. There are 11 other cities with populations exceeding 1 million. Novosibirsk, Ekaterinburg, Nizhny Novgorod, Samara, Omsk, Kazan, Chelyabinsk, Rostov-on-Don, Ufa, Perm, Volgograd. Incidentally, Absolute Bank has offices in all these cities. I'm standing here on an historical landmark of the city Novokuznetsk, the city which we visited during our Siberian trip with the colleagues. And it's an interesting spot because we have a very magnificent overview of the city. And we also see that there is a lot of production here. If you can see behind me, you see a steel plant, an aluminium plant, and right there is a cement production plant. So it's not only production, but there is also a lot of construction going on in this city. Because this morning, we visited a company, a construction company, which was developing a whole new district in this town. It's really amazing how these cities develop in Russia. Current economic growth in Russia is mainly based on high revenue from raw material export. We mean not only oil, but also gas, metals, timber, fertilizers and grain. However, Russian regions are actively developing, not only thanks to their extracting industry, the processing industry and industrial engineering are also expanding. The regions of Russia are considered to be the main area for future investment. I just visited with my colleagues this very interesting factory in Novosibirsk. It's a company with a turnover of about $250 million. The company is called Sibirsky Berek and they produce snacks like these. And uh, it was very interesting to see for me such a company here in the regions. It proves that we can also do business not only in Moscow, but also in the regions. Here you can see the road from the Siberian city of Novokuznetsk, a famous heartland of the Russian coal mining industry, to Novosibirsk. The trucks are carrying imported vehicles, products, clothes, construction materials and many other products. If you stay here for just half an hour, you will see at least 50 delivery trucks driving down this road. Given that Russia has more than 1,000 cities and around 800,000 kilometers of motorways, you can appreciate why turnover is constantly increasing at such a rapid rate. Here's an interesting fact. The five leading retailers built nearly 750 shopping centers in Russian regions during the 12 months of 2007 alone. Global distribution networks and luxury brands have entered not only Moscow and St. Petersburg. As you can see, the world-renowned Swedish Ikea network has opened up a branch more than 3,000 kilometers from Moscow, while the festival shop 20 minutes from here offers Gucci, Valentina, Prada and Chanel articles. Prices are higher than in Italy and France. I should also point out that according to the EBRD assessment, Absolute Bank is considered to be the number one bank in Russia when it comes to commercial financing. Many Russian retail market leaders figure among our clients. The middle class in the country is growing stronger. By the way, people living in business class houses and driving relatively expensive vehicles often consider themselves middle class. For example, it turns out that Siberians have a soft spot for Japanese vehicles. It is very profitable to sell on credit where outer showrooms. This is how we came into contact with the Siberian leasing company. Dmitry Malakhov represents a leading Siberian dealership selling top-of-the-range Japanese cars in another city of over one million people, Novosibirsk. 
We are now standing near the Toyota Dealer Center, one of the biggest of its kind in Europe, spanning some 14,500 square meters. It sells more than 300 cars every month. You are really seeing now only the one third of the whole building that is situated underground. I'd like to repeat that it is one of the biggest Toyota Dealer Centers in Europe. The booming economy is served by the ever-expanding banking system. Russian bank's assets are increasing by nearly 40 percent per year. The mortgage market more than doubled each year for the last two years. The same refers to the car loans market. Over recent years, most leaders in the banking sector have sought to expand their operations in the Russian regions. Now we are near the so-called banking district of Novosibirsk. Five offices of the biggest Russian and Western banks are situated within 200 meters of each other. We'd like you to know that they all have enough room for business development. Moreover, practically every regional city has not just one or two, but several similar areas. Regional banking branches are no different from the Moscow ones. As a rule, they are furnished in a uniform style, equipped with state-of-the-art technology and are ergonomic. Alex Kvatsov will show what they look like using one of the Absolute Bank regional branches as an example. On the one hand, the booming growth of regional markets demonstrates how fast Russia is accelerating its economic development and civilization while boosting its market culture. On the other hand, it indicates increasing competition. Running a business is much more difficult now than it used to be several years ago. This is the other side of the coin, which is typical for every process and trend. Although business is blossoming and living standards improving, bureaucracy, the authorities, judicial and legal corruption, population stratification, inflation, environmental environmental problems are still burning issues for our country. Our children's future is in our own hands only because the public health and education systems are far from perfect. Russia is organically integrated into the world economic system and as a result is affected by events happening worldwide. The 2008 global financial crisis has had an impact on the country's economic growth, inflation, product lines and banking services. We do not expect the situation to be remedied soon, but there is a strong yearning in Russia for progressive development in weathering the crisis. For this, we have all the resources, the manpower and the will. Anyway, Russia is a country with a huge potential. We are the heirs of a great culture and history. We are talented, full of initiative, ambitious, resourceful and dedicated. Absolute Bank is further testing to this. Over the years, we have doubled our level of business, leaving our competitors in many sectors and markets in our wake. I'm now standing in front of the branch of Novokuznets, one of the 17 branches we already opened in Absolute Bank. We will open another 50 branches by 2010. If we realize this ambitious plan, we will generate more than 100 million euro of profit. By joining KBC, one of the biggest financial groups in Europe, we will become twice as strong, twice as competitive and twice as effective. We have great plans and a great future before us.